We've been in our new house a number of weeks now. In fact, the months are starting to go by and the priority has been the house itself and our old one, getting that ready for sale. So the garden hasn't been on the agenda. However, when we did first move in, where I am now, we set up a feeding station for the birds and that's flourishing. I'm up to 30 species seen from the garden. So not all visitors to the garden around the area itself, but needless to say, I'm happy with that. The second project, always on my mind, and now's the time to enact it, is the building of an amphibian pond. There is a very small pond here already in the garden, and the previous occupant told us that they had newts, frogs, and toads. So that's very interesting indeed. I'm going to build a pond, and I'm going to blog it and record it from the talking stage, the planning stage, right the way through to completion. First of all, an amphibian pond, no fish. For as much as I do love our scaly friends, no fish because they will eat tadpoles and larvae of the various creatures that we want to attract into the pond itself. Have a look around your garden. Ours isn't big, but it's big enough to establish a pond. Look for somewhere that's ideal in the sense that where I am now there are no trees hanging over that will shed their leaves regularly into the pond. That's a lot of hard work to keep plugging away at that. Choose somewhere that doesn't take over the garden but will sit nicely, not tucked up so it's dark up a corner but reasonably light and I've got a perfect spot for that. I did some exploratory work, so I dug down to see if there were any roots in the way. That's important because you could have an area that's covered with roots and is going to be a difficult job indeed. The soil is clay, that's great, because what we want to do is build that pond and have no leaks. But in the event that you do, there will be polythene underliner um, underneath the actual liner itself and then with that soil it will bed down nicely so I'm going to show you right now the area that I've chosen that's the area behind me there my dog obviously wants to get in on the action I've marked out with canes an area that's five feet by three feet so almost two meters by one meter that will form the base of the pool remember with amphibians you don't need a big pool you're not keeping koi carp <laughs> twinkle that's my bedlington terrier there and what i've gone for is not a pre-formed pool the fiberglass ones are great they're also very expensive but i've gone for the liner that i mentioned just now and the beauty of this is that you can form the pool and dig it out to your own requirements. One of the things with the preformed ones, the fiberglass pools, is that they are made for fish. What you want is a nice slope, a nice shallow area so that the amphibians can get in and out. That's what we had in our old garden. And we would go out in the summer and there would be frogs basking there, hiding underneath the rocks that you've created little places for them to uh, come out of the water, feel safe, feel secure, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Start to dig, get the polythene underliner down, and then this is two and a half meters by two meters, and then I'm going to use the, the full extent of it, so I'll be creating lots of shallow area. There'll be rocks around there, and plants and loads of amphibians but that's some distance down the line for now it's a case of get the spade on the go and start to dig the hole as you can see there I'm standing in the main body of what will be water in due course it's reasonably deep we don't need it too deep because it's not for fish just for amphibians and uh, British
creatures. The sides are quite steep. The length now will be uh, that length. So a, a steeper side there and a more of a shallower edge there. So the sides are steep, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig those down so that it's nice and gentle and sloping into the main body of the pool itself. It's getting there. I think I've done all the digging that I need to, maybe a few finishing touches around the edge, but the pond liner fits very well indeed. The garden is on a slope, so if you have that type of garden when you build a pond, you have to take that into account. account. So the, the bottom end of the slope needs to be higher than the top if the water, of course, is to fill the pond to its maximum and the less black liner that you have showing, of course, the better. But I'm very happy with things so far. Just a few finishing touches and then we'll move on to the next stage. What I'm doing now is I'm going around the pond. I'm looking for anything sharp. For example, I've come across some slate or tree roots. These are okay because they're, they're dead ones, but just in case there's something growing there. So I'm firming the soil down, as you can see there. And when I come across something that grows, well, I'll lop it off. And if there's something sharp, definitely need to get rid of that. I've got a couple of layers of tarpaulin type material down there. I already had this anyway, so I didn't have to buy that. It is waterproof, although the purpose of it is not just that, but also just in case there's anything like a tree root or a, even a, a little stone, there's, to be honest there aren't many stones in this anyway, but just in case, then that will cover your base before you actually lay the pool itself. I am going to put another uh, layer of uh, polythene type material in, so it will be really waterproof by the time I've finished. I found a small piece of coal as well while I was digging down there, just one. We are not far from the South Staffordshire coal seam and there is a, an old colliery or an ex-colliery called Baggeridge which is walking distance away and also in the valley where we live there are some old very small uh, coal pits that have long since been filled in from many years ago so not a surprise although this area was originally farmland not quite the finished article of course but as far as the spade work quite literally is concerned I've done the job the line is ready the rocks are around the edge just to hold it into place now let's fill it with water shall we <laughs> 